In order to ensure the most optimal learning experience, we recommend having watched the videos that are shown on the screen now. Hello everyone, welcome to our fourth lab where we'll be going over how to connect an Arduino to an open log. So the open log is a cool device that allows us to record information from the Arduino onto an SD card that we can access later on when we plug it into our computer. As you can imagine, this has a variety of uses from simple things like uh, monitoring systems where you could uh, just set up an Arduino in a room, have it run for 12 hours, record data like temperature data, and then you can analyze it later, to really complicated systems where you could store a bunch of data and then transmit it all at once, and a bunch of other really cool things. So we have our open log to do that, and then we also have a level shifter here, which is going to be a device that lets us communicate between the Arduino and the open log. It's like an intermediary because the Arduino uses 5 volt logic on its digital pins, so when it's communicating and trying to send a digital 1, it'll be sending out 5 volts. However, the open log can only receive a maximum of 3.3 volts for a digital 1, so we need this level shifter which takes that 5 volt from the Arduino and converts it down to a 3.3 volt one that the open log can understand. It can, or it can also work reversely where it converts a 3.3 volt digital one up to a 5 volt digital one that the Arduino can understand. However, we will not actually be reading information from the, uh, from the open log in this lab, so it's not quite useful for the return track. We will go over that later in a different lab though. We also have a temperature sensor down here, which we're using in order to demonstrate some of the uses of the open log. We're just reading in the output uh, through an analog pin, A6 here. So for this circuitry involving the open log and level shifter, it's pretty simple. We basically just have a 5 volt line, which is um, given by all the wires in red. So 5 volt to the open log for power, which is coming from the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. And we're also sending the 5 volt line to the temperature sensor and the high voltage reference, which is the uh, a pin that means what the high voltage one will look like. So it's connected to the HV pin on the left here. This means that the high voltage side is equal to 5 volts. We also have a yellow wire, which corresponds to the 3.3 volt voltage line, which goes to the LV pin on the right. That means that the digital one on the low voltage side will be 3.3 volts. We then have grounds connecting all of our devices because you need ground. Uh, so ground on the open log, which is here ground on both sides of the level shifter because you need to ground for both voltage references, ground on the Arduino, and ground on the temperature sensor. They're all connected to the same ground. We also have wires connecting the two digital pins on the Arduino, digital two and digital three, to the level shifter, and then wires from the level shifter to the open log. We have them color coded here where orange goes up here to the level shifter and then comes out again. So you can see which wires are connected and that orange is connected to orange through the level shifter and blue is connected to blue through the level shifter. They're connected through the pins of the same number but opposite HV LV. So HV4 is connected to LV4. If you follow the wires through, you'll see that the blue wire is connected to the RX pin on the open log. This means that the Blue wire corresponds to sending information to the open log. It's the transmitting pin on the Arduino. The orange wire, on the other hand, is connected to the TX pin on the open log, which means that this is the RX pin on the Arduino. Consequently, D3, which is the pin that's connected to the blue wire, is the transmitting pin, and the orange wire, which is connected to D2, is the receiving port. Now that we have those two pins down, we also need to make sure to know which pin is connected to the temperature sensor, like we said before, is A6. Now that we've made note of all of those, we can move on to our software, which will enable us to communicate between all of these devices and log our temperature over time. Let's get to that. All right, hello everyone. Now let's go over the software that we'll be using to communicate with the open log. So first we need to initialize a couple of integers that correspond to the RX and TX pins on the Arduino. Remember that the RX pin was 2 in our setup and TX was 3. That's because the RX was connected to the 
transmitting pin on the open lock and the TX pin on the Arduino was connected to the RX pin on the open lock. We also initialized an integer for the pin that's connected to the temperature sensor, which was analog pin 6. After that, we initialize the logger. So this is going to be the thing that represents the open log through a software serial connection where we pass it its RX pin, comma, TX pin. So software serial is a library that you need to make sure that you're including at the top here. And it basically creates a serial connection through software that works very similarly to the hardware serial connection that we saw in the previous lab. After that, we begin our hardware serial connection at a baud rate of 9600 and our software serial connection at a baud rate of 9600. This is so that we can demonstrate that the information that we're seeing on the open log is the same as what's being printed to the hardware serial. It's just like a little debugging sort of thing. After that, we are going to read in the sensor value, so the value from the temperature sensor, just the raw analog, and then we're going to convert it to a voltage by multiplying it by 5 and dividing by 1023. Then we're going to get the time using the millis function, which returns the amount of time that the uh, program has currently been running. Uh, we're going to set it equal to an unsigned long integer because Millis, as, uh, as it's been running longer and longer, becomes a bigger and bigger number, and this ensures that it's harder for the number to overflow. And by overflow, I mean grow so big that the data type that's storing the value cannot uh, hold it any longer and it resets back to a uh, negative number or some other weird things. Then we uh, print the time that we just read in. So we say time and then the time, and then a space, and then the temperature, so, and then the sensor value. And on this line, we use a print LN because we want to print a new line at the end of it so it looks good on the formatting. You'll see when we're actually demonstrating it what I meant by that. And then we're printing the same things to the open log. So then after it's run, they should ideally be the exact same. And then we have a delay of one second or 1000 milliseconds, same thing. So that we're not being bombarded with information and it's uh, easier to process as it's being printed. And also temperature usually won't change that ridiculously fast. So if you're using it to measure temperature, there's no reason to have uh, it measure super, super fast. Depending on what instrument you're measuring though, you'll want to think about that in that you might want to change the delay if you're trying to measure something that's very uh, important and time sensitive. All right, uh, that's it for the code section, and now we'll go and actually demonstrate it. Let's get to it. All right, everyone, now that we've both designed our software and created our little circuit here, it's time to finally demonstrate what it is that we have created. So I'm gonna plug in the Arduino here. Open up the serial monitor on the Arduino ID. And as you can see, the time information, how long it's been running, as well as the temperature um, in voltage, so you'd have to convert that using the calibration curve, but the data's right there, and the little LED on the open log there is blinking. It might be a little tough to see, but it is flashing there because it's so fast. All right, now let's check what it looks like on the computer. So, plug that, take the little SD card out. We have an adapter here for the SD card reader, so we're just gonna insert it into there, plug it into the computer. Pops up here, and it's in the log file. So every time it creates a new file, it'll uh, increment the number that's here. We've run it before, so we're already at uh, 93, but if this is the first time ever running your open log, um, it might be log 0001. And as you can see, there's our information, just like we saw on the serial monitor, same stuff. Well, everyone, that's it for this lab. We have demonstrated how you can use an open log to store information that you can access later on your computer. As always, if you have any recommendations on future videos that we can do or things we can show during our videos, please leave them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. That's it for Hinge on Engineering. See you next time.